good morning today we'll complete two topics one is bryophytes and pteridophytes now till now we have studied about algae and various features of uh, the plant kingdom in general and in specific about algae today we are starting with bryophytes now bryophytes they include various mosses liverworts which are found in the moist and shaded areas uh, in the hills they are found Uh, they are also called as the amphibians of the plant kingdom uh, because these plants they can live in both soil but they are dependent on water for the sexual reproduction they usually occur in damp humid uh, and uh, shaded localities and they play a very important role in the plant succession on the bare rocks or soil now the plant body of bryophytes is more differentiated than that of algae it is thallus like and prostrate and erect and it is attached to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular uh, rhizoids so they do have rhizoids uh, which are again uh, here we find that uh, thallus like hai prostrate hai erect hai and uh, they have rhizoids they lack root stems and leaves and they do not have but they may possess root like stem like or leaf like structures and the main plant body of the bryophyte is haploid uh, it produces gametes and that is why it is called as gametophyte and the reproductive organs in the bryophytes are multicellular and the male reproductive organs they are called as uh, antheridium and they produce biflagellate antherozoids biflagellate means with two flagella they have uh, they produce antherozoids and the female reproductive organs they are called as archegonium which are flask shaped and which produces a single egg and the antherozoids they are released into water where they come in contact with the archegonium and the antherozoids they fuses with the egg to produce the zygotes now zygotes uh, they do not undergo reduction division immediately they produce a multicellular body which is called as sporophyte sporophyte and the sporophyte it is not free living but it is attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte and derives nourishment from it so some cells of this sporophyte it undergoes reduction division which is called as meiosis and it produces haploid spores and these spores germinate to produce the gametophyte again so bryophytes in general they have a little economic importance Uh, but uh, some mosses they provide food uh, for herbaceous mammals birds and other animals and the species of sphagnum a moss that provides peat which have a long term used as a fuel and as a packing material uh, also now uh, this packing material is for the transshipment of the living material because of their capacity to hold water and uh, mosses they also uh, along with the lichens these mosses along with the lichens they are the first organisms to colonize rocks and then they have a great ecological importance they decompose rocks and uh, they making the substrate suitable for the growth of higher plants and these mosses they have dense mat on the surface of the soil and they reduce the impact of the falling rain and they also prevent soil erosion so the bryophytes they are further classified into two categories liverworts and mosses liverworts they are generally found in the moist shady areas on the banks of streams for example markensia you can see here markensia uh, the thallus is dorsal ventrally and closely uh, pressed to the substratum Uh, with the help of rhizoids the leafy members they are tiny leaf like appendages in the rose or stem like structure asexual reproduction in the liverworts actually takes place by fragmentation through their thallae and uh, 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 by the formation of the special structures which are called as gamma cups you can see here the gamma cups uh, these uh, gamma cups they are green multicellular asexual buds which develop into a small receptacle which is called as gamma cup and which is located on the thallae and these gamma become detached from the parent body and these germinate to form the new individuals uh and the sexual reproduction male and female uh, uh, different uh, uh, reproductive organs they are produced either on the male or the or on the different thallae and the sporophyte is differentiated into foot seta and capsule just like this 
put seta in capsule and uh, after meiosis these spores are produced within the capsule and these spores germinate to form the living free living gametophytes when we talk of mosses here the predominant stage of the life cycle is the gametophyte that is the haploid phase which consists of two stages the first stage is called as the protonema stage which develops directly from the spores it is a creeping green branch frequently filamentous stage and the second stage is the leafy stage second stage is the leafy stage which uh, develops from the secondary protonema uh, from the lateral buds they are attached to the soil through the multicellular structures which are called as rhizoids you can see the structure of rhizoids here in mosses as well as in the liverworts so vegetative reproduction in mosses is by fragmentation and budding Uh, in the secondary protonema stage and the sexual reproduction uh, the reproductive organs antheridia and archegonia are produced at the apex of the leafy shoots and after fertilization uh, the zygote develops into a sporophyte which consists of foot seta and capsule as you can see here and the uh, a sporophyte in the mosses is most more elaborate than in the liverworts and the capsule contains the spores and the spores they are formed after meiosis and the mosses uh, uh, they have very elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal uh, common examples here are this funaria and this is sphagnum let's talk about pteridophytes pteridophytes these includes horse tails and ferns they are uh, used in the medicinal purpose as well as in the soil binders they act as soil binders they are frequently grown as ornamental plants and uh, they are the first ter terrestrial plants to possess vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem now pteridophytes they are found in the cool damp and the shady places where uh, they may flourish well in the sandy soil conditions also bryophytes in bryophytes we know that the dominant phase in the life cycle is the gametophyte plant plant body but in pteridophytes we find that Uh, the main plant body is the sporophyte which is diploid and it is differentiated into true root stems and leaves proper leaves are there and these organs they possess they have well differentiated vascular tissue also that is xylem and phloem and the leaves in pteridophytes they are small like uh, small sporophylls uh, these are microsporophylls and in selaginella they are large which are called as macrosporophylls uh, are there so the sporophyte bearing sporangia that are extended into leaf like structures they are called as sporophylls so in some cases sporophylls they have distinct com compact like structures which are called as strobili or cones and uh, like in selaginella or equisetum these are the examples where these are in the form of strobili or cones these spores they germinate to give rise to a small multicellular uh free living mostly photosynthetic thalloid gametophyte which is called as prothallus so these gametophytes they require cool damp shady places to grow and because of their specific restriction requirements they need water for fertilization and uh, the spread of the living pteridophytes is limited and restricted to the narrow geographical regions also so the gametophyte which bears the male and female reproductive organs these are called as antheridia and archegonia as we have discussed in the previous section also uh, now the fusion of the male and female uh, gametes takes place in the archegonium that is the female reproductive organ uh, which results in the formation of the zygote zygote produces multicellular sporophyte which is dominant phase in the uh, uh, in this uh, pteridophytes now all the spores they are of the similar kinds and such are called as homosporous conditions when the spores are same uh, in the genera like selaginella salvinia which produces two different kinds of spores these are macro which are larger and micro which are smaller and thus they are called as heterospores so the macrospores and mi uh, microspores they germinate and gives rise to male and female gametophytes and the female gametophyte in these plants they are related to the parent sporophyte for some period of time the development of the zygote into the young embryos takes place within the 
female gametophyte and this event is similar to the seed habit which is an important uh, event uh, uh, on the uh, basis of evolution we can say so the pteridophytes they are further classified into four classes Psilopsida, example Psilotum, Lycopsida, Selaginella, Lycopodium, Sphenopsida, Equisetum and Pteropsida that is Dryoteris, Teris and Adiantum. Thank you for today.